Today we're going to take you on a journey as we go through the process of imitating master photographer Martin Scholler. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today we are taking a journey as we imitate some of the amazing portraits by Martin Scholler. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about why we did this and then we're going to talk about how we did it and kind of our process all the way through. So this is part one and then part two, which is going to air tomorrow, we're going to be doing the retouching on this image. So the reason why we did it, it really helps in photography to kind of like find an image that you like and try to repeat it. It's as long as you credit the person that you're actually going for, it can really help to push you. Maybe you're stuck kind of doing like the same lighting setup over and over and over again. And you see a photograph and you're like, wow, that's actually really cool. I wonder maybe I could do that lighting setup as well. And in doing so, it's going to cause you to like get through some trial and error. You're going to be doing some things at the beginning that you're really not that comfortable with. You're probably going to get it wrong to start off with. But if you keep on going and going, going, you might wind up something with a lighting setup that maybe you've never done before, a portrait style that you've never done before, and you might wind up really, really liking it. So that's what we did. We set aside to like push ourselves how we can create a lighting style a lot like Martin Scholler. So we're going to take you guys uh, through the process. We started off, our lights looked nothing like what we wanted them to. We, we thought they were going to look pretty decent from the start, but they really didn't. So we went through multiple iterations of lighting setups to finally get to something that we like. So we're going to show you guys these with some behind the scenes images and uh, we'll just go through the whole process. So here in Lightroom, this is actually the entire photo shoot and uh, you can see where we started uh, up at the beginning. We wanted to take these portraits uh, for our website, for Flurn, um, for the bio page. This is actually Chris, he's our uh, CFO. And um, this is where we started off with the lighting for our shots, basically with two strip boxes either side. Now, in looking at Martin's work, you know, a lot of the catch lights are right on the sides of the people's eyes. So um, that's a really, really great way to kind of analyze the lighting. Look like deep into a person's eyes, and if you see reflections of lights, you can probably guess about what the lighting is. Um, there's a soft, there's an umbrella actually right here lighting me right now and you can probably see a reflection of it in my eye. So it's a really great way to see, you know, the lights that might be around your subject. Um, being that they were lit from the side, we decided to put two strip boxes both to the right and the left of our subject. And we can see, let's just zoom into about here, you can see the light right there in his eyes as well. Um, there were a couple problems here. The light really comes in from the sides really nice, but you get this kind of like dark space in the middle of his face dark face space and that might not be you know that might not be horrible maybe that's what you want in your image but the Martin Scholler images did not have that at all so then we switched up from there um, still kind of like working with our lighting we're still using the strip boxes as you can see here um, lighting on the side as well and we're shooting with a 50 millimeter 1.4 now the lights are turned really really do down in power because we wanted a relatively shallow depth of field as well now the next change we made is you can see here the d background is relatively dark because there were just lights on our subject but there were no lights on the background and in all the portraits that we saw the background was a little bit lighter so we decided to put a third light and that's a softbox there on the right so this is the softbox you can see and it's actually lighting up the background as well still they look pretty horrible um no offense chris but <laughs> it's pretty much our jobs to make it look better and that's one of the big lessons i've learned as being a photographer is a great portrait of anyone is totally out there. It's kind of your job to make it. So if you know if you deliver this to a client, they're really not going to be too happy with you because it's just it's not as good as it could be. But you're probably just a couple lighting setups away from a great portrait. So keep trying if you're not there just yet. Um, so kind of scrolling through these, we decided to put you know it's like well maybe the light's coming too much from the front. So we put the strip boxes you know behind the back and then coming even back around the front a little bit more. Um, we're shooting a little bit wide here and it's at 50 millimeters with a 1.4 lens so it's relatively wide a little bit wider than a standard portrait but it's kind of like the look that we wanted for uh for these images so the lighting kind of coming around towards the front maybe trying a few angles so we're trying this over and over again and it's like you know what really i mean the catch lights are not that far off but i just really didn't like the lighting it was it was much too it was much too uh, dark in the center and too bright on the outside. It just really didn't come together that well. So what we did is, you know, basically tried to switch everything up. We went from here and I switched to 200 millimeters. You can see what a difference that which is shot at 50 millimeters and that which is shot at 200 millimeters. It's going to really compress his face and make it a lot more flat. 
I thought it was like way too much, you know, way too wide at 50 millimeters. So we went to 200 and I was like, well, I don't like that either. So trying to zoom in going something like 70, but I really didn't like that either. So we went back to the 50 again and then bringing the light out from the front. Um, we'll talk about this in a second. So you can see during a photo shoot, like a lot of things change. Now, oftentimes you're not going to have time when you're actually working with your subjects. Say you are actually photographing a celebrity or something like that. You're not going to have the time to go and change your lighting like five or six times. So what I recommend doing is getting your lighting set up with a test subject who's wearing something similar to your sub actual subject and you know, a similar skin tone and things like that. That way you can get everything set up with your test and then the real subject can come in. You know, you might have one minute to shoot uh, Jay Leno is the first person that comes to mind for some reason. But if you have one minute to shoot Jay Leno, you're not going to spend that time getting all your setup. You want to do all your setup beforehand and then shoot your subject. So continuing on with that, uh, we decided that the soft boxes were a little bit too um, small of a light source. So what I did is I switched to a parabolic reflector, which is just a giant light source. And you can see it here in the reflection of the eye. It's basically, that's me standing right there in the middle of the parabolic. And with this as well, you can see, our exposures weren't exactly perfect in all those. Um, the same thing with these as well. It, the lighting was just a little bit too flat. It wasn't that interesting and it wasn't falling off really well. So continue on going. I know some of these aren't exactly exposed uh, perfectly, but we decided to keep on going and we put the strip boxes back on the <laughs> back on the lights. And instead of having the strip boxes come from the side, we decided to put them directly from above. Um, looking at the reflection in the portraits we still wanted those strips kind of in the catch lights but instead of coming from the side we did basically directly from the front now what we found out working is front kind of pointing in really kind of lit the sides of his face but if they're each like very close to his face and they're both pointing at basically his nose what it does is it creates a really nice highlight here in the center of his face with a nice fall off out to the, towards the edges so here we're just starting to get actually what we want out of our shots so this is the lighting that we came across and you can see it, it really is quite a bit more dynamic. Um, we tried a couple things like having Chris cough in the middle of the shoot just because it was kind of funny and then he laughed, which is some great portraits as well. So um, I always try to do stupid th stuff in the middle of a photo shoot just because you never know. That might be the best photos here of the day. Um, okay. The next thing we did is we put actually a neutral density filter in front of the lens. So he was so close to the, um, he was so close to the lights that the lights were really, really bright, but we still wanted to shoot at a shallow depth of field. So in this case, we're shooting at 1.4, but there is a three stop neutral density filter in front of the lens. So it's really cutting down the amount of light that's coming from the strobes that are literally right in front of his face, but you can still get a correct exposure. Um, the lights that you see here, off to the sides, both of these sides, let's just make this medium gray so you can see. You can see how it gets really dark towards the sides. And the reason that is, is because that's literally the strip boxes in the frame. I had about a gap, maybe two or three inches wide in which I was shooting through, and the strip boxes were literally right to the left and right of the frame. So getting them that close was turned out to be the key. Um, this is an exposure that happens if you forget to put your neutral density filter on. So that's the huge, that's a really big, so this is properly exposed and this is a three stop overexposed. So that's a really big difference and a neutral density filter can really good, do a good job with that. Um, we'll put links to all this stuff down below in case you guys are interested. Um, and then we kept on doing some interesting shots and uh, this is actually the shot that we wound up sticking with in the end. Let me just disable this. Okay, this is the shot that we wind up sticking with in the end. And you can see it's a really nice portrait. Everything is really um, close crop and the eyes are in focus. We have a really nice catch lights and um, it's basically what we want. So what we want to do now is I'm going to go back to our um, grid view and I'm going to pop open. Let's actually pop open de the develop module. I'm going to go over here to lens correction. Now, since we're shooting at 50 millimeters, it's so close. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> it's really going to cause a lot of distortion. Not only that, but we're shooting it uh, in this case 1.8, which is going to give you a lot of vignetting around your edges as well. So anytime I'm doing something like this, I'll always make sure to go to enable profile corrections, click on that. And what that's going to do is it's going to kind of fix a little bit of that perspective distortion, and it's going to help out with my vignetting right around the edges. If you want to even add to that, you can fix it even more right here in Lightroom without having to go into Photoshop or anything like that. So very cool effect there. Now what I can do is I don't want to have to do that with all these images. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go over here to, um, let's just bring this back over here 
And I'm going to hit Command A. So we've got this selected. Command A is now going to select all of them. And we can hit Sync Settings. And it's going to, those couple of changes that I just made, it's going to apply them to everything. So we've got all these checked. You can hit either Check None or Check All. I usually leave like Crop off just in case I did some custom cropping. And then we're going to hit Synchronize. And then you'll be able to see that it's actually just changing all of them at the same time. So that is basically how we went through the photo shoot of how we got to this image from going through you know many different lighting setups that really didn't look that good but in the end we came up with something that was really great that we liked a lot and um, we even went through an outfit change um i don't know if you guys saw saw that earlier actually but earlier we were wearing uh not we chris was wearing a blue shirt with a red shirt underneath it which i thought just a solid color would work uh, just a little bit better and match kind of his hair. So little changes like that throughout a shoot, shoot can wind up making a big difference. So that's how we actually did the shoot. Join us tomorrow for editing this image and we're going to make it really stand out and uh, a real piece of art. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn. I hope you learned a lot and I'll Flurn you later. Bye everyone. In case you guys are wondering why Lightroom was like really yellow, uh, I have this program called Flux, which basically warms up your screen to help your eyes accommodate to, you know, something at night. Uh, but that's what I disabled in the middle of the episode. So <laughs> don't edit with Flux on.